Today, I wanted to take a look at a pen that I feel is um, underappreciated or underrated in the fountain pen community. Um, so I figured we'd start off the new year. This is January 2022, so Happy New Year. Um, so I thought I'd start the new year off with um, a pen that I use a lot and a reminder that you really don't need to spend a lot of money um, in the fountain pen hobby to write with really nice writing pens. Um, so this is the Pilot Explorer, and um, I had checked prices this morning. The street price is around $23, and I wanted to explain to you why I think for $23, this is a really nice pen. Um, but to start with, this is a pen that I actually put off purchasing for a long time. This is um, introduced a few years ago to replace the uh, Pilot Metropolitan as Pilot's sort of entry-ish level pen. Um, it's a little bit more expensive than pens like the, the Varsity and the Petite, of course, but also more expensive than the Kakuno. Um, and this was introduced um, when Pilot increased the prices on the Metropolitan. Um, so this sort of came in um, I think the sticker retail price is around $30, and the market price, like I said, is around um, the low 20s. But this is a pen I put off for a long time, and the reason I put off buying it is really because of the way it looks. So I thought, looking at pictures, that it would be similar to this. So this is the part, the Pilot V7, um, the V series of rollerball pens, and you can see the similarities. So I didn't really spend a lot of time researching this, but from the pictures, I thought the Explorer um, was similar in size to this and similar in build quality to this. You can see the similarity in looks. You see, you got that circle here, you got the overall sort of look and feel of the pen is similar. Um, this is like a two or three dollar pen. So I thought the Explorer was just another cheap pen from Pilot. Um, so that's what um, put me off buying it at first. Um, when you actually get the pen, you realize that it isn't that. You know, this, this pen is actually, there's a lot of um, components of it that are actually quite premium in the finish, um, and I'll talk through those uh, a bit more later. But first, I wanted to talk about Pilot steel nibs. So, Pilot has a range of steel nibs. Um, I have a few examples here, um, and Pilot, you know, they have basically three, I, I, in, in my view, you know, there's three sort of buckets of steel nibs. You got the really cheap ones, um, which can be found on pens like the Varsity, um, they look like this. I think the Pilot Petite also uses this nib. Then when you move on to the mid-range of the steel nibs, um, you get nibs like this. This is the Pilot um, 78G, and this is the nib that is is really common in the Pilot lineup. So it's seen on nibs like the, the Metropolitan here. This one's actually a rollerball, but the fountain pen's the same thing. Um, it's found, found on the Kakuno, the pens like the Prera, um, the Explorer, they all use this nib. Um, and then the third tier of steel nibs is what I like to think of as the more premium Pilot steel nibs, and that's on pens like the Lucina. So this, you can see, it's a different, um, more decorated nib, it's a different shape, has a more complicated feed. Um, and then you have pens um, like the, the special alloy version of the, the Pilot Capless or, or Vanishing Point. Um, I would group that into Pilot's more premium steel nib um, offering. Um, but from a mid-tier um, Pilot steel nib perspective, the Explorer makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, at the $20 to $25 price point, you get a very reliable, very nice nib. Um, and for those who care, the stamping on this particular nib um, that you get with the Explorer is the same, it says Pilot Super Quality Japan, um, this is the same stamping as what you get in um, a Pilot Prera, which is the the more expensive of Pilot's mid-tier steel nib collection. So 
I thought that that would um, that was interesting and, and worthwhile to go to. Um, the other thing that really impresses me about the Explorer and why personally it's it's um, one of my favorite of pilots um, less expensive pens um, is that I don't like the Pilot Metropolitan. This is the Metropolitan. This one is a rollerball, but um, I used to have a fountain pen. I gave it away. And the Explorer actually addresses m many of the concerns or parts of the Metropolitan that I don't like. So if we start looking at the Metropolitan, um, one thing that, I, that bothers me most about this pen is the step down from the barrel to the section. I'm usually not one to care about this type of thing. Um, and I, again, this is a rollerball. The fountain pen is, is similar in, in the section width to, to the, the barrel um, width. Um, but for this particular pen, because the section is really narrow, I really notice the step down and I don't find it to be the most comfortable pen to use. Um, the other thing um, that I, I would say is a major issue I personally have with the Metropolitan is that because the section is made of plastic and the barrel of the pen, I think it's made of brass, um, whatever it is, it's, it's, uh, it is a, a, a metal finish that's quite heavy. Um, I'm okay with the overall weight of the pen, but because of the plastic narrow section and the metal body, it actually isn't the most balanced pen um, in my hand. Um, so that's, that's another reason. And then finally, um, as many of you know, Pilot isn't really known for building the best converters. You know, the, the Con 50, which is discontinued, was, wasn't all that great. The Con 40 is even worse. Um, the Con 70 is probably um, the pick of the bunch. Um, it's hard to clean, but it at least holds some ink and it's pretty easy to use. The Con 70 doesn't fit in the Metropolitan. So um, those are basically the, the issues I have with this pen. The Explorer fixes those issues. Um, first off, this is a very lightweight pen. So if you're the type of person who thinks lightweight pens are bad, um, you're not going to like this. This is a very, very lightweight pen. But if you're okay with the fact that it's lightweight, um, it actually has quite a few cool things about it. Um, first of all, first off, um, this barrel um, to section sort of transition is much nicer. Um, I find this much more balanced and much easier to use than um, the Metropolitan. You see it's a much smaller step down and it's a little bit of a thicker section as well. Um, the, since the whole pen is plastic, um, it's, it's very well balanced, unlike the Metropolitan, um, at least to me. And then lastly, because this, you have this like very squared off barrel, it does fit the Pilot um, Con 70 converter, which I don't have here, but it does fit, um, so you have to take my word for it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that, like I said earlier, I thought um, the Explorer was similar to the V-Series rollerball pens. And yes, they look similar, but that's where the similarities stop. The um, cheaper rollerball pens are, you know, body colored, injection molded plastic, just, just as you would imagine you'd make a cheap pen. That's what I thought the Explorer was, but it's actually not. So if you look at how this pen is finished, it's actually, it is plastic, of course, but it's, it is finished, um, you know, painted over. It's finished with a more premium fashion than the, the cheaper pen. So even though this is a very light pen, it's finished very, very nicely. Um, and the same goes with the cap. So um, pens, you know, in, like the Kakuno, for example, they don't have a cap. Um, the um, Platinum, um, the, uh, what is that Platinum called? The Preppy, the, the less expensive Platinum, um, and then the, the Prefonte or whatever the, the 10 to $15 version is, they have uh, plastic um, clips. This is a, a fairly nice metal clip that works really well. Um, this, for example, is a, is a much nicer clip than something you find in um, even like a Twisby Swipe, for example, which is, um, I guess, similar in, in price, a little bit more expensive. But 
this is a much nicer clip than I realized um, looking at the pictures, but it's, it's actually a fairly nicely made pen overall. Um, so I think that that is actually um, pretty cool. Um, I actually like this pen so much that, as you, you've probably heard me say a few times, um, when I use pens in um, a setting that I can't really control, so if I'm you know, in a client meeting or you know, at work in general where I may not have um, control over the paper or whatever, I tend to use pencils or, or rollerball pens, or, uh, not, not really rollerballs, pencils or gel pens or mechanical pencils. Um, so this is a pouch that I usually have with me. Um, and I actually carry the Explorer right there. Um, so I like the Explorer enough that it's really the only fountain pen that I carry from a day-to-day um, -day, um, going out, um, knowing that it will be beat around type of situation. Um, if you're curious to know what else is in here, just let me know, I can do, do a video. But that is how much I actually um, enjoy and appreciate the Explorer. So I do think it's it's quite um, an underappreciated, um, underrated pen, at least for me personally. And personally, it's it's a step up in my book from a Pilot Metropolitan, which um, ironically costs a bit more. Um, cool. So as always, I can show you a bit of how it writes, um, but this is Nothing really special in the way it writes. It's a inexpensive pilot um, steel nib that is found across all those pens that I, that I mentioned earlier. Um, but it is a very, very reliable and very good writer. Um, so this is the pilot explorer. This one is a medium nib. Um, and my apologies for the slight shaking my uh, stand here is on a kind of an awkward angle my writing is making my desk shake that's a medium nib and this is just a pilot black ink um, and this is rhodia paper so it's fairly smooth um, but pilot nibs in general i find um, from their steel nib to their gold nibs to be um, on the smoother side from a Japanese nib perspective, if you compare this to like platinum steel nibs have a lot of feedback. Um, um, Sailor steel nibs are mixed in, in my experience, um, but this um, this and other pilot nibs that I've used in, in this price range are very, very smooth. They're very, very reliable. Um, they are on the thinner side for medium, um, but that's kind of to be expected for, for Japanese nibs. Um, Funny enough, I don't find Pilot gold medium nibs to be on the narrow side for medium, but for some reason their their steel nibs still seem to follow that, you know, try that old expression of, you know, a Western or Japanese medium like a Western fine or um, however that goes. Um, that's certainly true here. But anyway, I do think this is a very nice pen for the price. I don't think it gets the attention it necessarily deserves um, in the fountain pen community. I think that has to do with the fact that it looks the, the way it does. I think it actually looks much better in person than, than pictures. Oh, one more thing. The cap, the snap cap mechanism is very satisfying. So it's one of those things where you feel a little bit of um, pressure or friction and then it's very satisfying when it closes. Um, this is, you know, I would be happy with this type of mechanism on a much more expensive pen. So overall, I'm a fan of this pen. Um, again, another reminder that while fountain pens can be very expensive and they're really nice pens that are expensive, um, you don't need to spend a lot of money to have fun and enjoy fountain pens. So Pilot Explorer, one of my favorites. Um, hope that was fun. Thanks for watching.